absolutely adore the Eberspacker uh, and our little heater. Um, however, we there are some several issues, which is that it needs servicing on a regular basis. Um, it needs servicing every 1,000 hours. 2,000. It, apparently 2,000 hours, which sounds like an awful lot. But when you use it as much as we do, um, then in winter or sort of like autumn to spring, you're talking every three months. Or for the summer series, summer period, um, we serviced it before we went out. And by the time the end of the, the summer is done, because the weather's just not the nicest in the evening sometimes, then it needs servicing again. You can send the servicing away and uh, we found that uh, to send it away it costs about 150 pounds yep. to send it away or you can buy an Eberspacher service kit and that costs 20 pounds um, so what Beverly is going to do today is uh, show you how she does her service because we definitely prefer to spend 20 quid rather than 150. This might look like a standard socket uh, like a long socket you'd use in spark plugs, but it has a huge big slot in it. And what this is, this is the Eberspacker extraction tool for removing the glow plug. The glow plug is ceramic, and you've got to be careful how you move it. This lets the wires come up inside so you can put the wires up and do the extraction. So what else do you need then? Uh, the one final tool that you'll need is the good old standby cloth gaffer tape. And in case you're wondering what that's needed for, when you remove the diesel, from the ever, it's a good idea to have some of this handy, lift the diesel line up and stick it to the bulkhead so it doesn't dribble diesel everywhere. So with all things boat related, the first thing you have to do when you're doing anything is uh, get yourself into uh, awkward positions and somewhere up there is Beverly getting the Eberspacker out. Job number one is to unplug this so that the unit can't operate. And for that you will need your flat bladed screwdriver, which you basically tuck into that little slot. Tuck into that little slot just there and it will pop up. Sorry you didn't get to watch that, but I'm not Zaphod Beeblebrox and I don't have three hands. So that pops up and when it does, the whole unit just comes apart. And I think I really do need to be Zaphod Beeblebrox. So it just comes out like that. Next, use a screwdriver to remove the diesel line, which I will then gaffer tape to the bulkhead to keep it out of the way. We undo that screw that bolt and these support screws and the whole unit will just lift out. Ah, so um, this is the Eberspacker and as you can see here, this. You had to stick your finger in there, didn't you? It's opened by these clips at the back and it just falls off. So as you can see, this blower blows air over all this and out here, the combustion chamber is on the inside of this metal piece, so mm. the two never mix. Yeah. Now, this is the electronic control. This is the brains, uh -huh. and um, it's held in by that little tiny clip and this screw. Right. So let's get stuck in. That comes out. Push the clip in. And this will just lift out, like so. It's, okay. that, it's that easy to remove. And these wires... Oh, I see them. Very gently pull them off, like that. This unit here is the temperature sensor. Okay, I see it. And so we'll be removing that in just a minute. So I can remove this. It's got a little slot. Oh, I see it. Just there, so I can just push that in and that'll just remove that and bit of plastic. the end piece. Yeah. 
once that's removed that will be easier now yeah might give me just a bit more leeway yes ah look at that much easier so just coming back to Lots this to do this is the diesel pipe which comes up and through into there right okay this is the glue plug this is the temperature sensor which is held in by this clip so i'm going to remove it's only just a little can you see that oh yeah And then that just lifts out. Um, and that's the temperature sensor. Yep. Right. Oh, and that, that makes that much easier to just have it to the side. It does. I've now got this. Which is the, the glow plug. plug. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do it carefully. And this is where you need the extractor tool, is that right? No, this is the boot first. Yeah, you've got to move this rubber boot carefully and slide it back. Every, but everything I've ever seen about this unit says just be careful with this bit. This is the one bit you're able to break things. So grab the wires. Yeah, because the wires are very, very fragile. They're very, very stiff as well. They are incredibly stiff. And that's why you need that particular um, so extractor tool. And in there, yeah. So is the we're going to. So are we going to remove the glow plug? Of course, we can't service it if we don't. Okay. So we get this. That's the Eberspacker um, tool. Slot. However, as Beverly says, we have made one ourselves. Yeah. Out of a. So you put that in, and then all you do is you don't. You hold it so that it doesn't twist sideways. You don't want to put any sideways force on this plug. Yeah. You just want to break the seal. That's it. Once you get the seal broken, you're, you're good. Yeah. And then get rid of that. And then unwind it. But all the wires as well. Now it comes. Right, so let's have a look at that glow plug. Um, as you can see, um, it's very sooted. Yeah. However, it's the ends, sharp. ends are square. That means that the glow plug does not need to be removed or replaced. It doesn't need to be time. replaced. Um, the ends become rounded when it comes to replacement time. But as you can see, it is incredibly dirty and sooty. So we have got to remove all that soot. And the best way to do it, apparently, is a little bit of wet and dry and just very gently. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, the motor. Posi drive screwdriver. Yep. Yeah. And off comes the motor. That's it. And this is the internal chamber. This is the combustion chamber where the air goes in. This is the diesel and air mixing tube. Okay, let's have a look at that because um didn't see that. So where's that? What's, what is it? This? Yep. That's the diesel and air mixing tube. Right, okay. And air gets sucked in through these little slats and spins around inside and does things. But these are where you need the Torx tool to take these out. And I noticed that somebody has serviced it at one point and used a non-Torx one here. So we've got an odd one in here. Seems to work, but you know. Okay. The gaskets in the kit will be for this area here. It will be stuck to the back of this. You can see there's it there. Okay. It's the old gasket. Yeah, um, the service kit comes with all the new gaskets. It does. Um, so we always just replace them. Mm -hmm. We do. Right, and there is a very, very tiny hole which you will have trouble seeing. Very tiny hole just there. Oh, I see it. Okay. That's well, I can see where you've got your putting your thing. That's the air intake for the whole burner. Oh, okay. That little bit there mixes the diesel right. with the air. And that, little, and that blocks up the suit. Right. And inside here is the copper gauze. The copper okay. screen that the glow plugs fits inside and that is a sod to get out and you will destroy it as you remove it right there's no way to get it out without wrecking it it's just not going to happen okay so I, I don't have the special handle for torx bits but i've got this and i can use it just to break the thread yeah there we go um beverly read um what it said on the torx bit and it said just said t27 beverly's resorting to power tools P27 
because this particular one does not want to come out. It always happens when you're videoing things. But this particular nut or bolt or whatever is definitely not playing ball. Um, and for whatever reason, it's incredibly stiff. So. <sighs> right, so I'm going to remove the burner chamber. I've got to take this out because it's got the, the diesel fuel line. And this is the burner chamber. And you can see way down at the bottom, you may need to turn your light on. You can see way down at the bottom. Oh, yes. There's some soot up here at the top. Yes, I can see that. That's where the diesel feeds in from this combustion tube. Right. So, need to get something down there to clean that. That is the air hole of the combustion feet. chamber. Really tiny. Yeah, that's it. You know, that's what does the burn in there. And I've still got to get the little gauze thing out from in there. And, and this is the heat exchanger. Which is really just a big chunk of aluminium. That's all it is. Hmm. Yeah, so once you break it down into its component bits, it's certainly nothing to get worried about. It's the old gasket coming out. Oh, this is the old gasket. So, yeah. um... And you can really see the soot on the edge of that. You can see the soot in there. And you can see the soot in there. So that will all get scrubbed out with the wire brush, wherever the heck I've put the wire brush. Um, it's this wire just... Brush. This one. Oh, that's in... the big wire brush she uses. Yeah, and when I remove the gauze, I will be able to clean down that one once I take the gauze out. Right, I'm with you. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to shove it down inside between the gauze and the wall and I'm just going to lever the gauze out until I can get a pair of pointy nose pliers down in behind this little gap that I've made. There it is. Ray, let's have a look. And you can see all the soot build up. Look, it's solid. This is blocking the air hole. Right, okay. When you put it in, there's a seam. You see three spot wells. Right, okay. And that seam faces away from the air hole. Right. So the air hole won't be on this side. The air hole will be on the exact opposite side, which is here. Right. And you can see this is clearly where it comes in and it builds up all this soot. And it is rock hard. Right. And uh, because the uh, measurements are so fine, um, that soot is just going to cause all sorts of trouble havoc. and havoc. So I can now take my, my brush and I can start cleaning out this little entryway. Well, I'm also getting my hands dirty because um, uh, Beverly's handed me this chunk of metal to clean. Let's have a look. Now I haven't finished. But you get the idea. But that's just some of the soot. On the good news front, this is a standard M5 bolt and it seems to fit. It seems to fit quite nicely into those threads, so I think we're all right. I'll just get a couple of M5 bolts from the Chandlers. But it's quite clear that this one here has had some sort of thread insert kit put into it. You can see there's something in the thread hole there, and I suspect that's what that self tapper goes into. Yeah, but the main thing from my point of view is Bev. Hang on. Yeah, so the main thing uh, from our point of view is Bev's going to go and source the nuts. And I'm going to uh, busily carry on cleaning um, this so that when it's uh, she comes back, it'll all be nice and shiny for her. And if the bolts are too long, I'll get some spacers. Good plan. Good plan. OK, so um, this piece which I was cleaning is done. Mm -hmm. And this bit that Bev was cleaning is done. The combustion chamber is now done. Um, so each one of those we took half an hour over. Bev, yep. I took one half hour and Bev took the half hour. So. We've, done, we've done nothing with the control unit and the motor. Right. Okay. Um, the motor will need replacing at some point because it does. But as you can see, it's a complete unit. When you come to replace it, you unplug that, throw it away, get the new one, plug it in. Mm. It's expensive, but it's easy to fix. Mm. And that's the key. So the thing to do now is to put these back together and to open the kit and put the gasket in. Yeah, yeah. okie dokie. I also managed to acquire some bolts off the... Let's have a look at them. Okay, so we've got some bolts. Stainless steel pan heads. Um, we're going to put those in here, except for one of them, which has been rebored and fitted with a self-tapper. Now, I've marked that one with a bit of white paint. Mm. So when I come to put it all together, I know which one to put the self-tapper into. Yeah. So I don't mess any of the other threads up. 
So I'm going to open this and empty it out. Yeah, so I can see what's actually in it. This is the new gauze screen. Uh, okay, let's have a look at that. Oh yes, and is that the gauze? This is the insertion tool that puts it in it at the right depth, so it's in exactly the right place by the air hole. Right, okay, dokie. That's just paperwork, I'm not going to bother with it. And these are the two gaskets. Now this is the one that completely got shredded. Yeah. Um, that's because it gets very warm and um, it just dissolved. And the only other thing you need to buy, and you buy it separately, is the filter. Hey, look at that, it's so cute. They're two pounds each. Okay, so it's the green gasket first. Yeah. You can't get the gaskets wrong because they don't, they're totally different shapes and sizes. So you cannot put them in the wrong, you can see. Yeah, I can see that they're, they're completely different things. Yeah. Right, okie dokie. So that is where it goes, there's no two ways about it. Right. So I've got that, I'm now gonna take my burner unit and make sure that this little slide is ready. And I just drop that in. Oh, and the slide just goes... It just goes here. It just fits in like so. So that the diesel tube comes down between the screws. Right, okay. And you can see now that we're lined up and I can see the white mark for the self-topper. Right, okay. So the machine screws go in these three holes. Right, okay, so let's get where those done. But these were the Torx bolts but they're now just slotted screws. So next time I will not need to use the Torx tool. Yeah, um, but that's all done. And now it's on to the next bit. The next yep. bit is to put the, other, the next gasket on and put the motor back on top. That's it, perfect That's fit. it, perfect. So again, it only fits one way. Um, and you can see that the shape here um, covers that little slide. Yeah. Uh, so that will keep that in as well. Yes. But it only fits one way. Mm -hmm. Right, so now it's just a case of putting the motor on. That's the air intake port. That's the air intake. Right. And here is the space for it to fit in. Right, okay. So there's only one way around that can go. Yep. That must fit. Like so. Like so. So I've got my bolts. I'm just gonna just before I put them in, I'm just gonna put a little bit of WD on. Yeah, well she's um tightened them up by hand initially. And now she's just using the posi drive to um, sort them out. Again, don't tighten them straight off. Just get them loose in and then tighten them up afterwards. You get it, when you feel it's toughening up, just give it about a half or a quarter turn. You don't need any more than that. Otherwise you will never ever get them undone. And um, don't use the power drive because... Um, you will never ever get them undone. You'll never get them undone. So um, just a half turn extra is all you need. Okay, so now that we've done that, it's time to put the glow plug back in. Okie dokie. And before we put the glow plug in, we have to put the gauze screen in first. <sighs> now, okay, so let's look at the new gauze. So as you can see, it's all nice and shiny. And here you can see the join. I don't know what's happening outside, but here you can see the join and you can th see three spot wells or three brazes. Mm -hmm. They have to go in facing away from the air hole and the air hole is on this side. Right, okay, okay. So they will go facing that way. Right. So I insert them under the little tool. It's on the little tool. And then I just put it in there and just push the tool all the way in as far as it goes. And if you look down inside, you will now see that it's down in there. And now we take the glue plug and put the glue plug back in. So we just put this in very carefully. And that needs to um, uh, screw in. Um, and like I say, the wires are very, very stiff. Yep, so, so you have to... Um, Put it in, there, that was it. It clicked the thread, I felt it. Yeah. So I put it in backwards until I felt the thread click and then as soon as I got that, I just rotate it by hand and as soon as it feels like it's tightening up, I will use the tool on it. Yeah. But you have to keep those wires uh, with it uh, because it is very stiff, those wires. And of course... And now um, it's got to the point, the wires are coming back to where the control unit is. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably pretty close to being in the right place. This is feeling stiff. And now it's the little tool and the uh, slot is 
it's just perfect so that um, the wires um, go in. Go and in. You hold this so that you don't apply sideways force to that. Make sure you keep this upright. Yep. And then just one little, just tighten it slightly. And again, don't over tighten. Um, and that you know, you'll see is now. It's firm. And now we're going to put the um, boot over. Yes, that's true. Good, good thinking, Batman. Right. So we're just going to cover that with the little uh, boot. And once again, the flat screwdriver comes in useful for tucking things in. Yeah. So, as I say, um, this is where we use the flat screwdriver. Although in future services we'll be using it to take part of the uh, machine apart now. Yeah. Uh, but using it as a lever more than anything else. So that's now in. And that means that uh, this... The brains? Is now coming back. This will now go back into its slot. It only fits one way. You can't put it in the wrong way. And we tuck everything back in. The wires will come up to there for that in a few seconds. And that you just slot into place. That will be clear there. And, and that's the little... Um... And that's the little screw. It's only just a little holding screw. It doesn't have any force. Whatsoever. It just goes and holds that. Well, it's now just putting the uh, temperature sensor back. Yep. And um, it just goes into place with this little... It's like a little hinge thing, isn't it, Bev? It is. And I can never remember which way round it goes. I suspect it has to go that way because it's asymmetric again. See? All right, okay. I know. So that's going to go um, away and Beverly is going to have to put that in the um, engine, sorry, uh, where it goes in the transom and then um, later on she'll put this uh, filter but we've got, as you can see, two spares. Mm -hmm.